Sometimes you have records in Excel that have in one column the order date and probably the order time, the client, the product, quantity, etc, etc, etc. And you want to get an overview how many orders did you have in one week, this next week, etc, etc. In order to do so, we are going to create a subroutine with VBA code that sorts and groups them per week. So when I run that code, I have the shortcut control shift S, then it asks me when do you want to start, and by default it takes the oldest date until you change it, then the end date, the latest date in your spreadsheet, and then creates a new sheet where it puts the first orders from the first week and it says that was week 9 and there were 17 orders, week 10, 26 orders, etc. It's all done on a new sheet. I'm deleting that sheet and run the thing later on after I explain it. You, you may need to know more about VBA and maybe even about Excel. So I developed three CD-ROMs. You can find them at genesispc.com. They have helped thousands of people to, uh, to become experts in Excel or in Excel VBA or even for their scientific purposes. What is the code? I'm going to Visual Basic, Alt F11. And I inserted a module there and I named the first subroutine this way, whatever name you choose. I declare a series of variables. The only odd ones maybe are these two because they are not of the value type variables but of the object type variables. I always use a lowercase o for that kind of variable names. So the one is of the range type and one is of the worksheet type. So we are going to say how, how big is your spreadsheet table. My table happened to be on sheet 3 and I say start at range A1 and find the current region and that range that is the entire range up to the first empty next column and empty next row and store that in O range which is of the range type. Then we find out what the start date is by default, I store that in D start. I use the worksheet function small and I find in the entire column starting in the cell row 2, column 1 of O range, which is the entire table, actually the current region. And that one, that means the, the first smallest one. And I put that D start in an input box. What is the start date you want to use? I format it a little bit so I don't get the time also. So I just say I want one digit for the month or two if needed. D, Y, Y. I do something similar for the end day, but this time I don't use the worksheet function small, but large. In the same entire column of row 2, column 1, the largest one, and I put that in an input box again. Then we are going to create a new sheet. We add to the collection of worksheets a new sheet and we capture that with the variable OWS which is of the worksheet type. So I need a set keyword like I did need the set keyword here. And when you add a sheet in Excel it always puts it before the sheet you are on. I would like to put it after. So the first argument there is you want it before something? No. So I type a comma. I would like it after the active sheet. Then I make a copy of O range and I copy it to that new worksheet, cells 1, 1. Then I am going to sort 
that from low to high from in an ascending order. So on OWS, that's the new sheet, range A1, the current region, sort it. Space, the first argument is, what is your sorting key? OWS cells 1, 1. That's the first column. If you want another column, do that. And then the second argument is that you want it in ascending order. And one of the later arguments is header as by default it is guess i'm going to say definitely there is a header if you don't have a header you have to adjust that of course make sure you have enough commas then we are going to talk to that owf more extensively so we use a with statement we find out how many how many columns we have by asking owf in the current region count the columns then we set i to 1 i is a counter variable of the long type and we do a do loop we add 1 to i each time so the first time in the loop it will be 1 2 why 2 because we want to be in the second row the first one is a header and we bring i count up by one then we find out what the current week is we store that in an integer variable we use the worksheet function the week number of ows but i don't have to type that anymore because i have a with statement so dot cells i1 that is in the second row third row fourth row fifth row and the first column at the moment that cell happens to be empty that that means we have reached the end current of the current region then we set i next week to zero else we set i next week to same worksheet function again and if if I current week is not the same as next week, then we bring I up by one. We insert an entire row, and in that row we are going to say week number has a count of I count. And I count keeps going up. And up until we reset it. I actually merge those cells for the range from column 1 to column C. That's why I needed that C. C was the columns count. We merge those cells, we give them a color index, <coughs> and we set I count back to zero because we want to start all over in the next week. We loop until i next week equals zero. That means when we reach that point. We auto fit all the columns in the current region and with and sub. We have a beautiful code that is going to do all the work for us. Let's run it one more time. Control Shift S. I'm going to keep that star date, but take whatever you want. That end date, and we got a list here. We had 17 orders in week 9, 26 in week 10, etc. I want you to know one more thing. When you make a spreadsheet like this, you, you bring in orders probably on today's date. There are two nice shortcuts. Control semicolon gives you today's date that happens to be when I made this video on May 21. If you want the date and the time, the date is control semicolon, then you do a space and then control shift semicolon. And that is the time I made this. Again, you may want to know more. 
You can find much more help, much more details on genesisbc.com.